Hello, everybody. Hi, welcome. I'm going to give everyone a few minutes to get synced up, logged in. I'll ask you just want to keep yourselves on mute for now, just so we can get through the presentation without, you know, barking dogs or anything like that. But um, we'll have an opportunity to do Q&A at the end of the session. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Welcome, everyone. Um, yeah, thank you so much for joining us. I'm just going to keep an eye on the waiting room, but we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, we are here to talk about risks for freelance writers, uh, unfortunately, uh, something that we all need to be paying attention to. Um, luckily, we have with us uh, Rob Hartley and Kyle Burns. They're with Dinghy, which provide uh, liability insurance specifically for freelance writers. Uh, this is the first product of its kind in the US. We actually worked with Dinghy who were established in the UK. You'll notice that it's dark out where Rob is as because he's in the UK. Um, we worked with them before they came over here to bring, to bring them over um, because, you know, it was such a needed product here in the U.S. So we launched, uh, Dinghy launched their, their U.S. writer's insurance uh, the end of 2020. <laughs> October, October. October of 2020. Yeah. 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 Um, 2020, so, so yeah. 2020. Yeah. Time, you know, what is it? Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we've been working with them and we're really excited. It's a great affordable product. It actually covers you. I don't know if we'll get into this, but if you've ever tried to get liability insurance before as a freelancer, you have to go through like, you know, manuscript reviews and there's this lengthy waiting periods and it costs a ton of money and Dinghy has got none of that. So I'm going to let Rob and Kyle talk through all that, tell you what it's about and, and specifically what it, it covers and, and why you might, you know, want it, to look into it. Um, so I'm just going to hand it over to Rob right now. Take it away. Thanks. Thanks, Regan. Let me get the presentation started. So as Regan uh, said, it's to do with kicking freelance and writer risks to the curb. So clearly we can't kick all of them to the curb, but we're going to do our best to help you identify how we, how we can help you manage them. Uh, so today we have uh, myself and Carl. Um, I'll, be, I'll run through a presentation and talk about a few aspects of rider risks. And at the end, then Carl's going to back me up with the, the FAQ. So we have a uh, chat area. So feel free to put questions as we go in there. And then when we get to the end, we can review them. And Reagan's going to help um, monitor the, the questions for us and hopefully group some together. So a little bit about me. So I'm the co-founder of Dinghy, uh, one of them. Uh, I'm based here in the UK. Um, been waiting for the time to come out to the US, but it's been problematic. Uh, so uh, we've been running it from here, uh, but thankfully with the support of Reagan and the Freelance Union. Um, I've been in insurance about 20 years, started actually with US uh, professional liability before coming to UK and then back to the US again. So hopefully any questions you want to throw at us at the end, um, between myself and Carl, we'll be able to answer them. And if we can't, we can uh, take them away and, and get back to you. So Carl, can you? Briefly, uh, talk about yourself. Sure, thanks, Rob. Uh, I've been with the company for the company being NSM Insurance Group, which is uh, the parent company of Dinghy, uh, for about 11 years now, uh, focusing on professional liability mostly. Um, so happy to be a part of the Dinghy team and help out uh, answer any questions you might have. Just a brief history of us. Um, so, Dinghy was founded five years ago. Um, uh, we were acquired by NSM, the company Carl just mentioned. It's a huge company in, in the US. Uh, we, it's a billion dollars of premium flowing through NSM as a broker uh, and, and MGA. Um, so they've been a real niche aspect. They're really supportive of niche areas, niche prospects, and products such as this. Um, and that's, that's their main thing. As the, you know, NSM, as they like to call it, sometimes stands for niche specialty market. Uh, and yes, yeah, so we based out of uh, Pennsylvania um, and helped to support this company, uh, Dinghy. We're now uh, licensed in almost every state in the US to provide rights insurance. So why, why riders insurance? Why partner with it? Well, from my history of being in, in US CNO business, I've seen that writers get a raw deal. Uh, you know, I've been in Lloyd's, I mean, charging premiums of $5,000 with 
five thousand dollar excesses, and that's kind of the general norm. Sometimes you might get it to two and a half thousand, um, but you're still, um, yeah, you're still having to pay through the nose for something that you shouldn't have to. Um, so we worked really hard with Green Arts Union and with NSM support, and we're here. We don't just want to provide insurance. We we want to actually be a partner for um, the riders community which is yourself we, we want to be here so we've actually we're taking time we're going and meeting other writers groups um with someone like the national writers union and we've done some other uh, youtube videos with them and the freelancers union and if you look at our website we have a blog post and the fourth one down right now is you know, it's the third here on the page but we, we release content as quite frequently uh, it talks about contract standards. So, for instance, it's got some great key points in there. If you're getting a new contract with a client, uh, things to watch out for. Make sure you know you don't have to wait to get paid when the work gets published, because that could take a year, or maybe it never gets published. Uh, try and keep hold of your own rights, so you can you can publish or you can keep your material, and maybe publish it in a different format or somewhere else. And it, it's great. You know, we, we're talking to uh, writers, we're talking to groups, we're trying to elicit the things that make your lives difficult and then provide solutions for them. Uh, insurance is, is one way we do that um, and if there's anything else we can do as we learn we will we'll share that with you uh, and if you have any feedback for us if you find that there's things that we could help you with or common themes come up from your feedback to us then we can work on it so you know please don't hold back we're here to help um, and yeah please have a look at the blog and hopefully you'll find some some interesting content there. Some of the things that writers face, um, uh, these are the typical, typical mistakes we see or the typical claims we see. Um, and what's frustrating is that um, if you buy a typical professional liability insurance product, invariably these are actually excluded. So if you go to market and say, yeah, oh, yeah I have a PL product, that's great, yeah, I'll buy a PL policy. You do have to be careful, you'd have to check because media liability is these risks are grouped together. Is typically excluded um, and you'll see in our policy wording uh, we we've had to state we took a base policy wording we've endorsed it so we've added the media liability endorsement and that means we do cover the libel slander defamation and it doesn't matter how good you are you know I've, I've made mistakes on things even going through this presentation there'll probably be a typo somewhere you know these things happen and thankfully it's just me giving a presentation to yourself no one's going to um, Claim against me if I've made a mistake in it, or Hamlet has made a mistake. Um, you know, we're we're going to be all right. But if this is being printed in a magazine and published ten you know ten thousand copies, and suddenly the market the print's got to be pulled up, rerun, there's costs incurred, and that and that's what um, those are the kind of risks you face from simple little mistakes you don't notice to large lawsuits like the four hundred fifty thousand defamation suit, even though the story was never published. So these things can happen. Um, and that's where our policy is really designed to come in to, come in to help. So uh, and why and why for why dinghy and why now? Well, again, you know, see having worked in the industry, you see that most insurance documentation is uh, sorry, most insurance applications are done on not on paper. You go to a broker, you fill in a form, uh, that form gets submitted to potentially another broker who potentially submits it across to Lloyd's or a carrier. Questions come back through the chain. They all get take time with emails come back to you, you answer them. And you've got this toing and froing paper system. It works great if you're a large business. You've got you know, thousands, hundreds of employees. You've got loads of turnover, multiple locations, and you need that personal interaction. You need someone to really get to the crux of what you're doing and understand your risk. But when you're a freelancer, Time is money. You don't we need to be going back and forth with a local broker trying to figure out the right paperwork. We've gone through, and a lot of those questions are irrelevant. You know, if you're if you're a bigger business, sure, you want to answer 50, 60 questions. As a freelancer, you don't need to. So we've we've gone through, we've compressed it, um, and we've made it online, digital, easy to use. So you go to the website, you start answering the questions, and that's it. You get a quote or you don't. And and if you can't, I'm afraid you know you're doing something that's slightly out of the box for us. Um, but I think 95 or 98 percent of people are getting through so it's not we, we feel like we've got a really good market and if we can expand into other areas that we will uh, but right now we feel we're covering the base area there and also by putting it online it means we can cut our costs you know we don't need to charge as much we don't have to have three or four people in a chain to feed we don't have to have commissions everywhere it's just you know you can talk directly to us 
we've got one partner with is Arch um, Insurance Company, which is an A plus rated carrier, and uh, they they you know they they rely on us to do the underwriting, so that saves time and money along the along the journey. So who did we target it for and why writers? Well, I think I've spoken about why writers. It was to help provide that media liability that is so difficult to get otherwise. Um, and also, it's a group CEO is actually a published author. Um, he, he's not on the call, I don't think. But if you want to look up James Twining, uh, I'm sure he'll appreciate the, uh, the shout out. But you know, we, writing is at the heart of, uh, of Dingy and Kingsbridge and NSM. Um, and you know, we, we see the need for it. And we wanted to work with the freelancers who provide a product. So we believe we've covered the majority of occupations here. This, this list in green, I think it'd be hard pushed. No one's come to us yet anyway and said, I do something outside of that um, that we can cover. So we also realized that um, most freelancers work as slashies. And I'm not talking about some uh, horror movie. Uh, I'm talking about, you know, you do one thing slash something else. So you might be a journalist, but you might also, um, you might also be able to have a blog. You might have your own blog going on. You might also do speech writing for someone else. Maybe you're an author and a journalist. Maybe you're a copywriter. You, know, you can do multiple things. So you can cover multiple, multiple writing occupations under one policy. And there are nuances between them in terms of underwriting pricing and in terms of um, questions you're asked. So do please, if you're, if you're thinking about, oh, I'll only just put one, do please answer what you do get covered for because that is important for, for your coverage. Um, and again, if you find a writing occupation that's not here, please write to us and say, hey, you know, I do this. Um, you haven't covered it. And then we can look at that, talk to Arch, and hopefully we can add it in as well. So I've talked about the, the product, but just to, to wrap up, we have the base professional liability cover, um, which covers you for your contract work, um, which is the base of really what professional liability is. It's your, your liability arising out of your occupational um, or out of your, of your occupation and the contracts you have. And then we have added on our media liability endorsement that gives you all of those extra coverages that you need as a writer. And we've so we've worked really hard to drive prices down um, to make sure that it's affordable because there's no point having a great product if no one can buy it. So we offer, a, it's an annual policy. You buy it, you know, it, it lasts for the year, but again, recognizing cash flow can be tight sometimes. We don't necessarily want to pay up front hundreds of dollars. You can pay monthly uh, by instalment. Uh, there's no interest on those instalment charges. And that's a yeah, quick summary. Again, um, there's no music, no hold music. You don't have to wait 20 minutes. If you want to speak to us and have questions, we do have a, a live chat on the uh, website. So you can click that widget. You can ask a question. We have been getting quite busy recently, which is a good thing. Um, so we, we, you know, we, We'll answer as soon as we can get back to you on it. Um, should be the same day, uh, but you know we still find it a faster route to quote and route to purchase than if you were trying to go through uh, a broker and spending a week or two on a, on a quote. And equally, if you have claims, I'll demonstrate very quickly how to, how to file a claim at the end of the system. One of the key things we design is when you, when you buy the policy, you immediately get your self-service area, which immediately allows you to file a claim 24 seven. You don't have to call someone, you don't have to wait. You send a claim notification, it gets straight to Arch, goes straight to their claims team. They'll then call you back and the claim is you know, it's logged, it's filed, it's ready to go. And we find that's the fastest way of getting claims handled quickly. Um, and once you're, you know, say you bought the policy, your system is there, self-service is set up. You don't have to re-sign in and enter the password and details. You, you request the magic link to your, your email, you open that and that opens up the browser, the uh, self-service in your browser. So I'm just going to very quickly run through. I'm going to demonstrate to you how quickly this can be. So as I said before, this is, you land on the start page. Um, let's imagine you're an author and a copywriter. So you can add up to five. Um, first of demonstration, I'll do two. How do you run your business? What, what style of uh, property? You can have an LLC. You can have just sole proprietor. If you're a sole proprietor, you can use your own name, you can use a trading name. Um, you could also put a pen name if you want. Um, so you can put writing as as opposed to trading as. Um, it, and that is whatever you feel is necessary for policy is in what you're covering yourself as a writer doing. An address lookup. Um, I always default to my uh, favorite place in America that I've never been. 
Uh, one day I might might end up living there. Um, it's all all driven by the uh, TV show. And then uh, when did you start freelancing? So this question is really related to when when you first did it. Not the first time you necessarily published a book, but the first time you actually started freelancing for yourself. So first writing for articles, had your website going. This allows us to see how much experience you've got. Um, you can choose as far back as, as you need to go. Um, and again, you can choose choose the months you need. And then your revenue in the, in the previous year. Obviously, if you've just started out, um, just please put your estimated revenue. But otherwise, uh, previous year revenue. 20% of revenue from a single client question sometimes tricks people. If you're self-published and you're selling books through Amazon, that's fine. We don't we don't consider Amazon as your client. We when you talk about a client, it means an individual person paying you money. So in terms of Amazon, it would be you know you're selling to hopefully hundreds, thousands of people. Each of those are individual clients in, in this question. So really, it's to do with if you had a contract with a particular newspaper or a particular uh, publisher who is you know generating twenty percent of your revenue. And yeah, if you have professional services, sometimes sometimes you need a license. Uh, this comes up very rarely for writers, but if you do, um, you can simply answer yes, and then you can say whether they're valid or not. Um, and then if you use a written contract or letter of engagement, again, it's not it's not a requirement, so don't feel you have to try and game the system here. Don't say yes, I always do, thinking that's the right answer. Just say you know if you don't use one, okay, you don't use one, but. If you don't, please do. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a really good thing to do in order of mitigating your risk, ensuring that people know what you're supposed to be delivering and when, and also vitally for yourself is working out when you're going to get paid. Because if you don't have it written down, then people can use all sorts of arguments for, for not paying you. We, we've seen it, and it, it's just even having something in email if you haven't got a written uh, legal contract. So those are our general questions. It's enough for us to give you a quote. It's enough for us to figure out what type of risk you are. Um, we have a few more questions to come. Um, but now you get to see your quote. So this is the, the system now generating the price for you. And in this example, uh, it's showing us a, a monthly price of $31, an annual price of 375. And here you get to choose your, your limit. So it defaults to the lowest uh, 100,000. You can choose up to 2 million. Uh, and these, the two numbers here uh, explain you can, if you're not sure, if you forget after this presentation, you want to come back and check, if you click the question mark items, they can help you with what's going on here. So what do these professional liability limits mean? Well, as an example, the first one, is your each claim limit. The second one is the total limit your policy will pay out. So if I go back here, in the first example, we've got just 100,000. So that means you can have one claim of 100,000, that's that each claim limit. And that means your maximum under your policy has been exhausted as well. So that'd be it, that'd be 100,000 each claim done. Or it could mean you have 10 claims of 10,000. So you're allowed, you know, 10,000 is less than 100,000, that's okay. If you had a $10,000 claim, You'd only have 90,000 left. So you have 10 of those, it raises the limit. So you could have 1 million, 1, 2 million, obviously means you could have a million dollar claim and still have a million left over in the aggregate for another claim. The retention, um, we default to zero because most of the time, actually that's the best, the best rate you're gonna get. You can increase it on some, on some customers, you'll find that the price changes, the price decreases. As we can see in this example, 78.38 retention actually doesn't make a difference because we've hit minimum premiums. So this is the lowest we can charge. So in this example, we have $940 for uh, one, two, plus the, uh, the contingent cover here. The retroactive date, another feature, this is a claims made policy. And what it means is you have to have an active policy in place when a claim is made in order for the claim to be paid. Um, and a retroactive cover means if you've got an existing insurance policy, then you can move across to this cover and we can then continue that coverage. So any work you've done that's been insured for the last year or five years, if there's a claim associated with that work that's been previously insured, then it can be picked up under this policy, even though we're brand new to your, to your history. So as an example, it only works as the carrier only works if you have an active policy in place right now. If 
you don't, then your retroactive date starts the day you buy a policy. So let's say I bought a policy four years ago. Um, I've now set my retro date four years ago. And the final piece of coverage, uh, the contingent BI and property damage. So this is another add-on we've managed to put in uh, because this falls between the gaps in people's policies normally. You have a general liability property uh, policy would cover you for slips and trips if, people, if you had a workplace or if you uh, more of a tradesman, imagine you, you dropped, a, dropped a hammer on someone's head. It's that kind of claim. However, it would exclude the contingent property damage or, pro or bodily injury. And then typically... Professional liability coverages exclude this. So there's normally a little gap in cover where this falls, like, falls between the cracks. So we've picked it up under this policy. And what it means is that if you were to write an article, um, typically say about um, exercise, fitness, or about dieting, health, someone was to follow the advice in your article, get sick, perhaps you, you know, you're writing a yoga pose and you actually wrote the yoga pose wrong, they get injured. Because they've followed your advice, they can then actually make a claim against you for their injury. So that, that's what this coverage does. Um, and again, you, get, you, you can choose a limit up to the maximum of the professional limit uh, above. And then finally, you have your um, policy start date. You can choose any day from now up to 30 days. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'll, I'll choose today uh, so I can show you the self-service area in action. And then just as a reminder of what we've talked about, we, we're trying to make this clear. And again, if it's not clear, please reach out to us. Um, you have to forgive me because this is a demo demonstration app. Some of the images are broken. It won't be broken on the real website. But these are supposed to give you a reminder of what you're covered for. Um, and as we, so hopefully if it, and if, it, if you still don't understand anything here, as again, you can use the chat down here. Um, you can ping us a question, we can then respond. And if you're, once you're ready, um, you can choose your cover. We then ask a few uh, attestations to make sure that you can uh, fit. Sorry, just make that a little bit larger for you. These are very general. I won't talk through all of them. Uh, feel free to come and get a quote um, and, and have a look around. And then I'll, again, you can ask questions if something doesn't, doesn't feel right. This one's quite key. If you you know you don't if you know you if you know you have a claim, someone's already written to you going that article was awful or you delayed by publication. Then unfortunately you can't buy insurance for that known event. You, you can't buy the policy today knowing that you've got someone about to make a claim and hope that it's going to cover you. It has to be an unknown future event. Um, so that's just quite key to making note of. Uh, and then we have these yeah, various attestations that vary based on the coverages, the, the occupations we do. So I won't go through them now because that's very specific to the ones that I chose. But please, if you have any questions, do reach out to us. And then we get a, a summary, um, just a reminder of what you've chosen. And then you get the choice of choosing monthly or annual payments. Um, it's up to you. As I say, we don't charge any interest on the, the monthly. For the purpose of this, I'm using a, a demonstration card. So don't feel like you're going to be able to rich and go and buy a, buy a yacht with the, uh, the card. Um. <laughs> and if you enter the phone number, because that, in case we need to get hold of you, that's the best way of reaching out. You'd be fine. Um, we will email. And that's it. So you've gone through, you've got the quote, you've got a policy. And it's active from now. I purchased it today. Um, and then this is your self-service area. So this area is available to you anytime 24-7. You just request a link from the website um, and, we, and we'll open up for you. And it gives you a reminder of what you've purchased um, and you can see your, your coverages. Your documents are automatically generated. Um, although as this, is, this is a test server, so I'll come back to that in 30 seconds. And just a reminder of the, thing, the, the information you've told us. So, it's one of the, you know, throughout the policy year, we don't expect you to remember the questions you told us, questions you answered. So it's just a reminder that you can always come back and check. And if you want to make sure that things you told us are still valid, that's great. And if they're not, then reach out to us and we can, we can work with you or we can make a note and say, that's fine. Uh, we'll deal with it at, at renewal. Um, and then the other, other thing I just want to show you is about making claims. So again, you, you get access to this 24 seven. And it's a very simple, um, simple form. We try to make it as easy as possible because we know claims can be 
uh, very emotional. Um, so we just want to we just want to want you to reach out to us. We want us to make that first point of contact, and then our clinic expert claims team will come back to you and help you through that process. You may have already told us your phone number, but you never know your phone number may have changed. So we just want to make sure we capture that number again. Um, the claim occurred date. If you don't know exactly, just just put today. If you had a letter that says you know we, we accusing you of X Y Z or any any emails, you know, feel free, please upload them here. Otherwise, you can just write something like, you know, um, phone call threatening uh, lawsuit. Sorry, I can't spell. I should be able to spell better to a group of writers. <laughs> well, the, the worst people is not spell. So, um, yeah, uh, and then and you simply submit your claim inquiry. And that's now gone. So that would have, that will go straight through to um, our, our underwriting team with Adini and also the, the claims team in, in ARCH and we'll make sure that we follow up and make sure that it's been picked up and we'll discuss with them. They also receive an instant copy of your policy documents so they know what cover you bought, when you bought it, if you've got a retro date, so they can see everything they need to in order to, to start generating your, your claim and they'll call you straight back. And uh, his documents that have been generated now. So each, each policy you get your certificate, uh, sorry, your schedule, sorry. Um, and it, it lists out who you are, where you are, re any retro date, um, and the start date, and your renewal date. And then it goes through all the various cover uh, items. You'll see that these schedules are formed in endorsements. The form is the standard. That's our, our miscellaneous form plus the media liability endorsement. These um, other endorsements, they can vary by state. So the California for instance, the California state wants us to amend the number of days cancellation notice. You, we, we could give you if there was any reason we ever wanted to cancel or not renew your policy. We'd have to meet, you know, meet these demands. Otherwise, everything is, is pretty standard. Um, but you'll see various, various different endorsements here, depending on the quote that you get. Uh, OFAC is, is uh, to do with the, um, you know, make sure that you, you agree that you're not on the list effectively. We do check as well, but um, it's never come up, thankfully, uh, but that's just saying that if you were to be on the OFAC, you wouldn't get covered. Uh, and, and then the, the coverage is um, it's fairly standard, but I'll say it. I won't go through it now. The only thing I want to skip to is the, is the media liability area, just so you can see, um, just so you can see the endorsement. So this, this is the, the key part of our policy um, where we then add in those, those coverages that are, are so key for, for writers. Um, so product disparagement, false light, plagiarism, infringement of copyright, negligence. And as you'll see, it means anything to do with any type of media content. So you publish it in any way you like, whether it's written, printed, digital, broadcast, it, it doesn't matter. Um, it's covered under here. Um, I, I have to caveat, obviously, that every claim has its own nuances and perhaps there'll be something that falls outside the cracks. But this is designed to meet the needs that you've got. If you're writing articles, if you're publishing self-publishing books, and it covers whether you're self-published or whether you're published through a, a publisher and that publisher is asking you to identify them or they're not identifying you, you'll, you'll, this would cover that, that aspect of it. Um, uh, yeah, false advertising, it's all in here. So this, this is the key part. As you'll see, if we go uh, back to Exclusion K. So I'll show you this is this sort of thing you would normally see um, in a professional liability policy because this is a professional liability. You definitely find that uh, if I can find it now. You, you find that you there's uh, here li so libel and slander can actually be excluded under a professional liability policy, and that's typical, and that's where the, the media liability industry is so key to, to bringing that back into your policy, which is why we add it. You'll see it, bring it, it then endorses the policy and adds that cover back in. So, um, yeah, I think that's that's enough now. I don't want to deep dive into insurance for you. Uh, better things to do on a three o'clock on an afternoon. Um, so I'll switch back to the presentation. And again, any questions you've got, please, we've got a chat going here. Uh, I can answer them at the end, or Carl can. Quick, quick reminder, the claim is that the, it's there. No need to wait on hold. You have to speak to someone, you file that, it goes through to the expert team, pick up your documents, and then they call you 
and they'll work guide you through that process. And they're fast. They don't want to. They don't want to hang around when these claims are gone. Some of the feedback we've had, uh, which is great, you know, helps us get out of bed in the morning. So, uh, you know, if you've got anything nice to say, please do. If you don't have anything nice to say, please also get in touch because we, we do want to fix problems. But if you do have something nice to say, it's always it's always a real pleasure to hear it. Um, so things like I wish Dingy had launched year, years ago. It's, it's great to see. And that's it. So I'll, I'll um, hand back over to you all now. Uh, I can see there's some messages in chat. I'll stop sharing. And Megan, if you could uh, help mediate, please, on the chat, that'd be great. Sure, absolutely. Um, I think I'll just kind of go in order of what's been received. And then, you know, as we're chatting, if anybody else has questions, throw them in or, well, you know. I think the first one I saw was about um, LLC um, and having insurance. So obviously I think people know that, that having an LLC for your business provides some level of protection. Um, I think there's just some clarifying what that means versus having liability insurance, which is kind of a different. And as, as we saw in the walkthrough, you can have liability insurance for your LLC. So we kind of talk through the, the differences there. Yep, uh, it's a valid point, Megan. You, know, you, you do cover LLCs and, and writers. If you have your own LLC, then that, the LLC will cover you even if you were to write under your own name for whatever reason, if you found it was more beneficial to publish something yourself as opposed to under the LLC. It still is expansive enough because it covers you as a director, employee, partner or, of your LLC. Uh, and on that as well, if you were, if you did have an LLC and you were to expand and take on an employee or someone to do some uh, small projects for you, then if they're a part of that LLC as an employee, then they would also be still covered under your policy. Yeah, I think my understanding of LLCs, and we've done some work with, with uh, groups on, on helping freelancers get through that too. If you have questions about LLCs, check out our website under our uh, Freelance 101 section. We've got some information there. Um, but basically, if you have an LLC and somebody does bring a lawsuit and you lose, um, they can only take the money from your business. They can't go after your personal assets. Um, what the liability insurance would do would, to help, would be to help defend you in that lawsuit and hopefully you wouldn't lose and you wouldn't lose that money and everything would be great. Um, that's, I think that's a, a quick way of summarizing that. And like you said, you could have it either one. You don't have to have an LLC. Um, there's benefits for that. Uh, here's, a, here's a question from Rob. Uh, not you, Rob. Um, do you offer a discount in stats with anti-slap uh, laws, strategic lawsuit against public participation? Maybe that's we question. don't offer any, yeah, hey Rob, um, great name by the way. Uh, no, we, we don't offer any uh, discounts or, or loadings other than, other than the product that it is. It is a product state. we offer the same price. <laughs> In yeah. states with anti-slap laws, he's clear. Yeah, I, I'd add, yeah. so uh, in, insurance is regulated at the state level. So a state that would have an anti-slap law, you know, could carry a lower rate than, than a state that doesn't have it. So that would have been contemplated when we set up the rates. So it's, it, we wouldn't load it on after the fact, but each state would be, uh, you know, we have to file individual rates with each state. So um, that would be contemplated when we develop the product. And then there's a question here that I think I know we've talked about before. We've definitely heard from people um, in those in those final attestations. There's some questions about you know writing about Fortune 500 companies, um, you know, and sort of investigative journalism and what those sort of clarifications really mean. So I think they people see them and they sometimes feel like, oh gosh, maybe that is maybe that means I don't you know qualify for this because maybe what I what I do might fall under those those limitations. Um, but they are actually quite specific, we've, as we've discussed. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'll say this one, Karen, you can say the next one. It works well. Um, yeah, so if you're th that Fortune 500, Fortune 1000 uh, company attestation, that's if you were to be writing investigative reporting. So if you're in there trying to dig up the, um, maybe legitimately uh, finding something wrong with it, a Fortune 1000 company, then uh, we we don't we can't cover that kind of activity. We find that that's very high risk. Um, and as as of yet, we haven't got a customer who said, "Oh, actually, that's exactly what I was doing." If you're writing an article about a company that has happened to have done something wrong, let's say you're writing a historic piece about Enron or 
um, you know, so, some some article just happens to mention okay, they're not they're no longer a Fortune 1000 company, but a, a company that you know has is current now has done something wrong uh, has been fined for it. That's absolutely fine. You know, you're you're reporting on a on a on a fact. You're you're not in there digging up the trying to film them outside their their, their work. You're not trying to harass people for interviews, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You're you're just reporting on events. So most of the time. You know, once we explain this to people, they go, oh, right, yeah, I get it. Thank you. That's not that's not what I do. Um, so, again, if you do get stuck on a question like that, please click the icon in the bottom corner, and then you can ask that question. We can talk to you. Um, we can phone you, or we can answer through the chat uh, and just find out exactly what it is and cover any queries there. Uh, there's a two-part, isn't there, there? Um, we, do, we do have a definition of where what each author is. Author is um, it is in on the website. Um, I'll tell you what. Uh, well, I'll, I'll paste. I'll post a link in the chat while we go through the next question. Yeah, and the last the last question we have here in the chat right now is: Could you use your business name as a trading name? So I think when you were filling out the quote, there's a space there. Yeah, I, I, what I tell people most of the time is, you know, whatever you're signing the contracts as, so for your services as a writer, um, that's the name you should be using when applying for coverage. So if you're doing it under your, you know, your name, uh, that's how you should apply for coverage. If you're signing the contracts under, uh, you know, your LLC or your business name, that's how you should be applying for the coverage. Great. So Rob just just put those writer definitions in there um, so you can see what those mean. Uh, any other questions? Open it up. If there's anything else that's unclear, like Rob said, you know, we can always reach out to, to Dingy. You can reach out to us and we can put you in touch. Um, but if you go through, if you go through that, the website, um, everything is listed there. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, there was a question in the chat earlier, but we will be sending a recording of this uh, around to everybody through Eventbrite where you RSVP. So um, you'll get a link to the full video of this. If you missed a step, if you feel like you didn't write something down, you want to go back and listen back, that'll be there. Um, so just watch for that email through Eventbrite um, in the next 24 hours or so. Um, if there are no more questions at the moment, I think we can wrap it up. Um, thank you to Rob and Kyle. Thank you everyone for taking some time out of your day and uh, joining us here. I hope this was helpful. Um, like I said, any other questions, reach out to us, reach out to Dingy. They're, you know, they're super helpful. We've, you know, they love to answer questions like this. We've got Rob, we've got Kyle, they've got a whole team over there who are just waiting to answer your questions. <laughs> so don't hesitate to reach out. Um, Thank you, Rob and Kyle, for uh, walking us through this. And uh, have a great thank rest you. of your day, everybody. Yeah, thank you, Reagan. Thanks, everyone, for attending. And if you have any questions, please do get in touch um, you, through the live chat or again via Reagan. You can put it on. Uh, we're here to help. Uh, we're happy to discuss individual needs on, on a one to one basis. All right. Great. Thank you.